Hey everybody, I got something interesting on my desk today. This is the Crocodile Boat, I think that says V005, and uh, it has a crocodile simulation appearance, this four channel water induction and all that kind of fun stuff. And this was sent to me by Banggood. And I'm gonna admit it that I went ahead and requested this thing. Now, I live in Florida, which has alligators, not crocodiles. I've uh, definitely had many, many, many interactions with them in my lifetime. And so I thought it'd be kind of fun to have this remote control thing and just see how it works. So let's open it up. Nice thing here, so let's pull this out. We have, LGR would be happy that we have one packing peanut. And right here, whoa, this thing has got some weight to it. Okay, here. This thing, I don't want to break these little propellers here. It's two pieces. Yeah, there's something to that. Okay, so that's actually pretty dang good. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. This is the crocodile head. Uh, which is awesome. It is made out of, feels like wood. Kind of like a plastic wood. I don't know. It's an interesting material. I'm guessing it's a, guessing it's a plastic, but it sure feels like wood. So my original plan was to just take this thing down to the lake and goof around with it and give it away to my niece or nephew or something like that. Uh, but as I began to tinker with it, as I began to look at the manual, uh, while I was filming that unboxing, I realized that there's a little bit more going on with this thing. It, the thing can sense that it's in the water. It's got like a little pairing procedure to pair the boat with the remote. And that got me thinking, there is probably more tech in this thing than you'd expect. Now, you know, when I look at this little controller here, it's obviously nothing too fancy. I would expect that this thing would hand out little 2.4 megahertz signals and, you know, something like that. And it would tell, turn this motor on, off, backwards, forward, you know, that kind of stuff. But with the idea of there being a pairing procedure and this thing knowing if it's in the water or not, I think there's some microcontroller action going on and possibly some two-way communication. So the first thing I noticed was that it tells you in here that in order to pair the thing, uh, you need to put the boat in the water. Now, I was looking for something obvious on the bottom of this thing and there's, there's nothing there. It's just a, a plastic hole, which makes me think that it's actually looking at these props and detecting capacitance between the props to figure out if the boat is in the water or not. I'm guessing that's somewhat of a safety feature so a kid doesn't cut their fingers with this thing, but also uh, I'm, I have a feeling they're using it with some other things. So um, let me grab some alligator clips, <laughs> get it, alligator clips, and see what happens. So what the instructions tell us to do is to put the boat in the water and turn the remote on and this thing is going to flash. And that is how it pairs itself with the, the boat. Um, now obviously this thing is just going to sit here and flash because it's not in water. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this alligator clip and we are going to pin it between these two things and see if it's using capacitance. And you'll see that the thing has immediately paired. Now, that actually tells us two things. One is there's some kind of microcontroller in here that's sensing capacitance. The other thing is that there's some kind of two-way communication between the boat and the controller. Like I would have expected you know, for just your basic RC toy that this would completely be one-way communication. But somehow, some way, this boat is communicating back to the controller. Now there's no display or anything other than this LED, but something is going on there. So I think we should tear the thing down and take a look. First thing I'm gonna do is pull that 14500 battery out of here. Looks like there's room to cram an 18650. That might be something I, I try next. Now these covers look like they all need to come off. Okay, so I have not looked inside this thing. You're seeing this with me for the first time. Let's see if we can get this top off. Oh, there we go. There, there we go. Okay, so we have a little teeny tiny gasket around here, as you can see, uh, to keep the water out. And yep, 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 look at that. We have some wires soldered to the shaft of the prop. 
um, which I'm guessing is going to come back here to some form of microcontroller. We have these two hobby motors, which let me uh, let me grab something for a second. Now I haven't seen them before with the little red caps on them, but these are extremely popular uh, hobby motors. So this is the typical motor that comes in an Arduino kit, and this one is a vibration motor from a laser tag gun. So you can see it has this little thing off center so it cams and vibrates. Uh, this one has a capacitor across it. These two have capacitors across it. This one does not come with one by default. I'm guessing you have to add it from the Arduino kit. So you can see in here, we've got two motors, uh, little arrows telling you what direction the motor goes, I guess. Uh, that, what is that, some kind of counterbalancing thing? We'll have to see what that's doing there. Um, I'm guessing that's some kind of anti-vibration counterbalancing device or something. Uh, or, yeah, I don't know. And they're just using straight up silicone to stop water from coming in here. Uh, so all the interesting stuff is in here. Let's take a look. Now there is something weird sticking through there. I can't really tell. It's like there's a wire sticking out of the front of that box. Let's uh, open this bad boy up, see what we got. There we go. Okay, so this is the flytechrctoy.com uh, XX239R uh, revision 2020-518. And so we've got a couple of caps, a crystal oscillator type thing, and an antenna. Um, I'm guessing there has to be more on the underside of the board, and there's no way that we're going to go this far and not find out. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out any information about this microcontroller itself. I tried the FCC, I tried looking it up separately. Everything on the back of it is scrubbed clean. But what we can figure out is what it's doing. It's obviously receiving signals from the remote. It is sending some kind of signal back to the remote. It could be modulating the speed based on what it's receiving. It is definitely doing something where when the battery gets low, it drops this thing down to, uh, I think 40% power according to the manual. So we'll play with that in a second. Um, I haven't actually fired this thing up and had it running. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to try to do it in a way where we can see the props and everything all at once, uh, or at least the important parts. So we're going to put this lithium battery back in. And nothing particular is going on right now. So we're going to turn this thing on. And it's going to go into pairing mode. Slide this up this way a little more to the middle of the screen here. So that's going to go into pairing mode. So we're going to go ahead and pair it. Do it on this side to keep the wires out of the way now. There we go, we have paired, and now we're gonna do this one here. And you'll see that prop goes. At first I thought maybe this thing had some kind of decoupling going on there to take the, uh, the prop off the motor, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's just literally going forward and backwards. So both. Okay, so yeah, that has to be some kind of balancing thing or something like that. Um, let's take a look at what happens when we get into low power mode. So the first thing I want to confirm is that red is actually positive on this uh, lithium ion battery. I never trust, I've gotten bitten by it once or twice, I never trust the colors or the orientation of these lithium ion cells. Uh, yeah, so we have, let me get that down, just press a little bit better. Um, we have definitely red is positive, black is negative. So with that being done, we are going to plug this connector in, uh, making sure that we're going red to red, black to black, now that we know that we have our polarity right. And I'm going to hook this up to the bench power supply, so red to red. And you'll notice I cut these wires at two drastically different lengths, and that just as I'm messing around here on the desk, that's a nice way to make sure we're not going to accidentally bump them together in a way that's going to short anything out. So we're going to bring this back up here and um, turn on the bench power supply. 
and you'll see let's see here you'll see that we are paired and now we can let these motors run and you'll see hopefully that as we drop this voltage down let's just let it run As you drop down to 2.7 volts, you'll see that the speed slows down to 40%. And that allows you to kind of know that your battery is going to die, but still limp back. There's 3.7 volts. So the instructions tell us that basically you have about two minutes to get the boat back to shore once it slows down to that 40% level. The last thing I wanted to say is that you can just barely bod yourself in a... Uh, an 18650 battery in there. I took that same battery connector, soldered it up now. Note that I'm using one that's not keyed, so you would absolutely, definitely, 100% want to make sure that you are going red to red, black to black when you plug this bad boy in. But you can fit an 18650 battery in there. Just make sure that you've got it pressed up against that little teeny tiny plastic thing so you're not hitting the motor. And you'll see it does operate just fine with that 18650. Sounds actually a tiny bit more powerful. Well, there you have it. I do have a couple more things I want to say. Just some full disclosure, just a quick talk. Um, I did lose a prop on this when I was screwing around. And uh, Banggood generously offered to not only replace the prop, but to just send me a whole nother one, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I also want to say that I saw a comment in a previous video saying that, you know, they wish that it wouldn't take so long to get things from China from Banggood, but most of the stuff that I've gotten, I, I would say probably 75% of the stuff that I've ever ordered from Banggood has come from the U.S. So, for instance, when they shipped this, it said three to seven days, and I think I got it in like four days. So, uh, this is not the same as some of the other Chinese retailers where everything is overseas. Uh, you can get things pretty quickly. And I'm not trying to sound like a shill, but I just want to say, like, I really appreciate it when you guys use the links in the description. Uh, I don't run mid-roll ads because I think they're annoying. I don't have a Patreon. Maybe I should. I don't know. But um, the main way that you can really support the channel is to use those links in the description. For one thing, it does help when I get an affiliate commission. Uh, I try to only review products from companies that I actually like working with. And uh, if there's something wrong with it, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that I lost a prop. Um, but to me, it's kind of cool. Like To be honest, one of the biggest compliments you can pay is to find something on the channel like an Arduino board with a duck on it or or a crocodile or some meter and like the review enough to go out and buy it like that means a ton to me it uh, is something that weighs heavy on my heart I want to be authentic when I review these products but it just means a ton to me that somebody took the time to watch a video that I made and go out and buy something based on that and so I think that's a really huge encouragement so not only with my channel but the other youtubers you know if you see something on their channel take the time to go back and get it through their affiliate link uh, to really just be an encouragement and support the channel that the people that make this content um, they did give me some links to put in the description they're having a sale uh, at Banggood right now so I encourage you to check that out also but hey that is my crocodilian. Let me know what you think. And I have one more thing. If you find some product on Banggood that you want to see me review, no matter how weird it is, leave it in the comments. Uh, electronics, non-electronics, leave it in the comments if there's something that you want to see reviewed from Banggood on this channel. I just think it'd be funny to see what you guys would like to see. Uh, so anyway, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you found this thing interesting. I think it has some cool tech in it. Have a great day.